Hello, I'm Song Jun Kim from NSRI. In this talk, I will present the mystifying open source crash reporter on in depth secret analysis. First of all, I explain the rationale for the necessary of a crash reporter and its basic operation. Then, how it is applied to the open source crash reporter for Linux. Lastly, I will show several security flaws found in the project. We often experience software crashes on various applications. Since advanced and enhanced testing techniques are widely adopted in the software development and testing period, the crash has been quite reduced compared to the past. However, with increasing the number of applications, the number of crashes is also increasing. End users may often experience those pop-up windows when they meet software crashes. Fixing the crashes can be very time-consuming and difficult. The crash occurs only under certain conditions and the program terminates immediately and it is very difficult to reproduce it. In addition, it is very difficult to gather data about the crash itself and various environmental information to fix it. Fixing crashes is not limited to the developer group. Users may encounter crashes more often than developers do. However, users do not know how to provide this information to developers, and there is no way to do this. A crash reporter is an amount of auto automated tool for fixing crashes. The crash reporter collects crash information such as memory snapshots and CPU registers at the moment the crash occurs and writes a crash reporter to the file. In addition, additional information such as memory map and exclusion environment information are collected, to, uh, collected and added to the file. The collected information is transmitted to the developer and they replay it using the collected information and the code is prepared and applied to the latest release. The crash reporters have already been applied to various platforms. In Windows, it has been installed since Windows Vista as a service called Windows Air Reporting. Basically, it collects press information and allows developers to debug it in the form of postmodern. After that, if a solution can be provided immediately, feedback is also provided. It is Windows Error Reporter GUI. Next, Automatic Bug Reporting Tool is a fresh reporter tool running on the Red Dead Linux series. In the same way, when a crash occurs, core dumps or metadata are collected and delivered to the server. Currently, ABRD Automatic Bug Reporting Tool covers applications written in C, C++, and Python languages, and cases where common oops occur. For instance, since Red Dead Enterprise Linux 6.3 version, it covers a case where a kernel penny occurs when an additional package is installed. This figure shows the GUI of the ABRT. Code stack and instruction pointer and signature are used as a technique to analyze the crashes and solve them. Code stack relies on code stack at the crash point to find unique, bo unique box, and instru instruction pointer uses the crash in instruction address to deduce crashes. And signature adopts 
We program specific heuristics to the caustic techniques for more effective treatment. So, in this talk, we perform a systematic analysis of the open source crash reporter. Most open source reporters, such as Reddit, ABRT, or an Ubuntu crash reporter, work very similarly. Here, we targeted the Ubuntu error tracker and examined its operation and core functions in detail. Later, we want to share the security flaws we found. We enumerate the security threat and check what security issues are occurring and through uh, these security threats. Ubuntu Error Tracker provides a feature for a crash reporter that is similar to the WER Windows Error Reporter Reporting and ABRT Automatic Bug Reporting Tool. It collects system hands which last 30 seconds and other severe errors to the end users and delivers them to the Ubuntu server. It also provides the ability to handle kernel crashes or crashes in, in Linux containers. This talk focuses on the base operation during the crash. Ubuntu error tracker consists of two parts. A port implemented in Python script and is called when a crash occurs in the kernel. It intercepts a core dump including memory snapshot and CPU registers collected by the kernel and gathers various metadata. After that, a UI for user consent is also provided. This is essential to deliver the collected information to the server. Hoopsy was called, previously called a report D in the past. And as the name suggests, it is a demo that delivers information collected by a port to the server. This demo is also automatically installed when a desktop or server is installed and it is sent to the Ubuntu server daisy.ubuntu.com. Now I will explain the in, in the order of in the order of a port, hoopsy, and daisy chain. A port is called immediately after a crash occurs by the corner's core pattern handler. The core pattern handler is specified in proxy's kernel core pattern and is as follows. The path to the effort script is followed by the pipe and next the crash program's PID process ID and signal number and core file size are passed as arguments. Thereafter, the, the effort script handles the core dump received through the pipe and uses the PID to record process execution environment information and OS information. For reference, a crash, the crash information generated in the container is delivered to the port script through socket IPC. This is step for generating a crash report. The information collected in the previous step is saved in the var crash directory. At this time, the file name is composed of the executable name with the absolute path and user ID, and it has a crash file extension. That crash file extension. In addition, the upward script can exclude unwanted process crash import through the upward ignore.xml file that user can define and modify 
in advance. The crash report basically consists of two parts, a core dump and metadata. Metadata include OS list information related to the crash and package version timestamp and argument passed to the execution environment and the call information located in proc file system and is retrieved as more advanced information. Actually, in proc file system, the memory map address of the process and the number of running threads and detailed information related to the kernel are located. The core dump next to the core dumps are handed over from the kernel to the port including memory snapshots at the moment of crash, CPU register, etc. Postmodern debugging can be performed using that information. In addition, it is also possible to configure the step trace through retracer using the collected information. The next step is gain consent from users. The file created in the previous step has a that .crash file extension in file crash directory and has the user permissions of the program. After that, if there is a crash report newly created by the update notifier running on the OS, execute the port GTK program. The GTK port GTK program is one we often see when it crashes or hangs. If the user approves, it creates a file with the that unloaded file extension in the var crash directory. This is the process of executing the basic operation of the port. The next step is the operation of the Hoopsie daemon. Hoopsie is a daemon and performs the function of delivering crash reports with user consent to the Ubuntu server. First, make sure you have the internet connection and do the job. If there is no internet connection, the job is inserted into a queue to process later. Once our uh, internet connection is established. The crash report in key value pairs is parsed and inserted into the intermediate data structure GHash table. After that, it encoded in binary JSON format for HTTP POST operation. This encoded data is transmitted to the DAISY server in Ubuntu. Core dump is often very large since it contains because it contains the contents of the memory snapshot. In order to prevent such data from being frequently transmitted to the server, a field first text signature was introduced. Hoopsie first transfers the data without core dump to the Ubuntu server. At this time, the stack signature which is generated by a retracer using core dump with needed debug symbols is generated and transmitted together. The stack signature example is as follows. The server requests a core dump if there is no data of the same stack signature. Then, is compressed and transmitted using HTTP port. On the other hand, if the stack signature exists, already exists, the, the URL including the UUID value for the corresponding information is returned. The server puts the data received from the hoopsy into the database. And if a core dump is requested, the core dump is sent from the hoopsie is requested to the retracer. 
After retracing, the signature for the step trace is computed and recorded in the DV. The result is are displayed on error.wd.com. So far, we have looked at the operation process in the order of a port hoop C days chain with focus on the delivery of the crash report. Now, I explain the core features and more in a port and hoop C. A port is set to prohibit running multiple instances at the same time. The reason is that several applications rarely crash at the same time, and if a series of crashes occur at once, it puts a lot of burden system burden on the uh, burden on the system. So they are press processed in sequence. To do this, it uses a Firebase lock. If the lock is acquired, the port is performed mutually. Next, the port drops its privileges during the operation, partially dropping privilege and totally dropping privilege. At first, only the real UID user ID is changed leaving the effective UID as it is. We call this as partially dropping privilege. The reason for changing only the real UID is that the effort, effort needs to maintain privileges during the operation so that it can gather fresh information. During the process, it also uses OS access function in Python that's available when they, the real UID is the same. Therefore, it leaves the effective UID and drops only the real UID. We call this as partially dropping privilege. Later, when writing the crash report to a file, it must be saved with the user permissions of the crashed program. At this time, both effective UID and real UID are finally dropped. We call this as totally dropping privilege. After partially dropping privileges, the port collects metadata and core dump. After that, the port performs totally dropping privileges and then writes out the gathering data to the file in bar crash directory. The core functions of the hoop C are shown as follows. Well, first, hoop C needs to detect event in the bar crash directory, and it needs to detect changes in network connectivity. In addition, because the crash file needs to be transmitted transmitted periodically to lib and event loop which is frame for the convenience is used. Second, the data composed of key value pairs in the crash file is converted into an immediate data structure, GH table. And this is finally encoded to the binary JSON format. At this time, UTF-8 verification is also being performed for effective binary JSON coding. For occurrence, the library for binary JSON uses the archived MongoDB C driver that is too old and has not been updated anymore. And thus, some secret issues are, fo are found in this code snippet. And finally, we use lib CURL and it the hoop C use use this lib CURL to send data to the DAISY server with SSA verify peer option. Thus it may cannot upload the crash report to different URL than DAISY server. 
Next, I like to share the secret issues, several secret issues I found I found while looking at the operation process of the airport and Hoopsy. There are four secret threats. First, the sticky bit is set in the bar crash directory. In the directory, there are crash data with that crash file extension and unload that unload file extension to trigger Hoopsy and that lock file extension to mutually operate the airport. Attacker can easily access the directory bar crash directory and these files can be specially crafted or manipulated to perform a malicious attack. Second, attackers can easily trigger Hoopsie and a port at any time. A port can be called when attackers create a dummy process and send a signal that results in core dump action, such as set fault. Hoopsie can be activated by creating a unload file in bar crash as above. Third, separately dropping privileges can cause timing attacks by attackers. Finally, a port leads user-defined configuration files with root privileges. The following security issues were, were found based on previous threats. There are three types of issues. The first is it can prevent core dumping by disabling the port operation. Next, it can prevent the unloading the generated report, generated report to the server. Alas, it can dump the crash report of a privileged learning process so that it can be read by general it can be read it can be read by the general user. We will look at these issues in detail. There are three ways to prevent poor dumping. First, is the a uh, way to use the word wire word writable rock file as mentioned earlier lock is used as a way to make a port to work mutually the path of the lock file is located in the bar crash directory if attackers acquire the lock in advance and do not list it core dumping can be prevented. The second is the way to send a stop signal to the airport. A user cannot send a stop signal to a privileged process, but this is possible if the process has been set real UID to users 1. As expl explained earlier, while performing partially dropping privileges for OS access function in Python, and it uses uh, the, the real UID is lowered to the same level as the user. At this time, attackers can send a single step signal to the port. Since the process acquires the lock first, Sending stop signal and uh, signal stop result in disabling port dump. The third, it is a way to prevent port dumping by generating an unhandled exception. Before writing the information dumped into in dump dump in a port to the file. Check the contents specified in the upport ignore.xml file. At this time, 
if a file type not defined in a port ignore the XML file is used. Unhandled if the exception occurs because exceptions are not handled. This process also disables core dumping. Next is the way to prevent hoopc from sending crash reports to the server. There are two methods to do this. Ghash table is used as intermediate data structure. When using ghash table insert function in ghash table library, there is no countermeasure for collision. When a collision occurs, the current value is replaced with the new one and the old value remains in memory. To solve this, we need to provide the value distribution function when creating a ghash table. But Hoopsy didn't do that. If the attacker repeated creates key value pairs with the same key in the crash report, memory exhaustion occurs. In the following method, a special crafted crash report can trigger an integer overflow and it leads to a heap overflow. The method for triggering integer overflow must satisfy the following conditions. In key value pairs, the length of, of value must be greater than zero and is less and less than 1k kilobyte. The reason the value is less than 1 kilobyte is that unloading is possible only when the key value is less than 1 kilobyte if it does not exist in the whitelist. The length of the key must be greater than the sum of the length of the value and 7 in u into 32 max value. Here, 7 is the size inserted for padding at the, at the memory. When try, try to try to unload the crash report configured in this way, the integer overflow occurs and additional memory needs to be allocated, but it cannot. At this time, when the data is mem memory copied in a small memory area, a heap overflow occurs and hoop C will be dead by cell fold. When memory is overwritten, the function or all function pointer existing in G main context of glib is also overwritten, but the structure of the memory allocator has already been damaged and making further exploration difficult. Finally, the information leak related issues. I would like to introduce an issue that causes information leak leakage by pausing the execution of a port and changing the target of the crash report to be generated. If the crash report generation target is changed from the original program executed with the user permissions to a, pri to a privileged process, the reporter of the privileged Privileged process can be generated with the general user permissions. The attacker, the attack plan is as follows. First, the attacker creates an original process and sends a segfault signal to it. Since segfault contains uh, the action an action, a seg a segfault signal contains an action that creates a cordon. The port activated immediately so that the port is activated immediately. After that, it executes the operation of the port and pauses it immediately. Since the PID of the target process to generate the crash report must be the same that of the original process, 
that has been dead. The dummy process is created and killed repeatedly. PID increases monotonic, and when it ex exceeds the maximum value, PID max value, it nearly starts in 300. The repetition is going on until just before the PID of the original process. Next, start or restart the target process. Finally, if you continue the effort, attacker continue the effort that has been paused before, a fresh effort for the target process is generated in the bar crash directory. In the first step, a new a way to run a port and post it right away is to send a single stop signal right after the dropping privilege described earlier. Finally, just before the dropping privilege, it reached prop PID status file to get the UID of the target process. Attackers can use two just uh, such as uh, I notify to detect the changes to the status file. After the above file event, file event, a port can be paused by sending a single stop signal. In the second step, in order to make the PID of the original process and the PID of the target process the same. The dummy process is created and killed repeatedly until just before showing the same PID. However, it is difficult to match the PID of the target process to the original process exactly because someone can be crafted during the system operation. To solve this, we propose the concept of PID pool. It contains a number of PID of the original process. It increases the chance of showing the same PID between original process and target one. To make a PID pool, we should spawn multiple apports. But as mentioned earlier, spawning multiple apports is prohibited by check lock function when the apport starts up. Fortunately, we can achieve using a previous issue but word writable lock file. First, we make a lock file in bar crash and activate activate the apport and stop the apport. After that, we can remove the that lock file in, in bar crash directory. These steps can uh, spawn multiple apports. Then the repetition is performed until the result is nearly approaching the original one. Instead, just before the same PID comes out. After that, when starting or restarting the target process, it succeeds if the same PID exists in the, in the PID pool. Here, we assume only assume that the target process is hoopsie because the hoopsie is a privileged process and we can restart at any time due to the previous vulnerability. Finally, um, if the same PID is found in, in the PID pool, when in the, in the single continuous signal is transmitted to in the to the to the upward, a report on the running target process is uh, created with the user permissions. Okay, let's check the video.
This is POC script. You can see the bar crash directory is empty. And POC is started. You can see the PID pool. There are five items in the PID pool. Currently, a spawning dummy process. Yeah. Maybe dummy processes are spawn. Hmm. And then make a fake crash file in bar crash to kill the hoopsie process, hoops demo. The fake crash file is loading to the Hoopsie demo and as you can see Hoopsie has been killed. And a successfully exploit last time one hundred and seventy three seconds. And let's check the crash report. You can see the hoopsie, hoopsie is crash report. This is metadata and this is memory map of Hoopsie demo. This is quite dumb. Yeah, that's it. Okay. This is conclusion. Crash reporters are more popular and popular, but it has it has. 
some severe security challenges. Uh, as you can see, the disabled core dumping or unloading for everyone and with a part of press dump of privileged line process. In May, the result in those attack and information disclosure attack. So we should pay more attention to audit existing design and implementation of the crash reports. Thank you.